in the previous session we have seen that how uh, PLL uh, locks and uh, has some steady state uh, phase error in the presence of phase step, frequency step and frequency ramp. But all that analysis was uh, while using the small signal model of the PLL and we also told, we also have uh, looked at the PLL and told that there is some heart limit on the error voltages because of the phase error detector which we are using. In this session, we will look at uh, the actual transient uh, signal in the PLL when we have any phase of frequency uh, step. Okay? The one which we looked before that was with the small signal analysis. Now, we will see how actually the transient signals will change. What are the limits uh, for different kinds of PLLs? Okay. Uh, we are going to study about the acquisition of clock in PLLs, clock frequency in PLLs. Okay. Our example, uh, so far the example which we are using that is a simple implementation where I have a mixer based phase error detector which gives me error voltage followed by the loop filter which can change depending on the type and order which I want. This controls the VCO. This is just a symbol you can think about it right now. So, the frequency is controlled for this VCO okay. and this is the output V in and V out. This is V control. So, what happens is when you design this PLL, okay, you said that okay, I have my omega out as omega free plus KVCO times V control. Okay. At time t equal to 0, you provided omega in frequency, which is the input frequency. Okay the input for V in signal and this is for omega out as for output signal, you have this frequency as omega naught to begin with. Okay? And omega free is not equal to omega naught. So, the two frequencies are different. The free running frequency is different the of the oscillator with control voltage here. Uh, control voltage is equal to 0. So, both these control voltages and the error voltage they are initially equal to 0 at time instant t equal to 0. You have a frequency error to begin with and now you want to understand whether the PLR is going to acquire the lock which means whether output frequency is going to be equal to input frequency or not and what is going to happen during the due course of acquisition. Okay? So, Typically, when you go and design this PLL and you happen to observe the output frequency over a period of time, okay. So, I am just going to plot one kind of uh, frequency acquisition which you may see. You may start with omega free, you may have some kind of frequencies doing like this. Okay, and then for some time you may see something like this and after some time it will be very smooth. Okay. This is a typical behavior of a PLL acquiring the output frequency when you start your PLL. Okay. In this particular case, we will just uh, kind of vaguely uh, divide this area of frequency acquisition into three parts. Okay? In this part what you see here is I will show this with the simulations also, but uh, right now in this part what you are what you are seeing here is that the frequency increases and then decreases, increases and then decreases. Okay? Why will it happen uh, if I want uh, if I want to acquire a certain output frequency will it not be nice? that it goes only in one direction and tracks it. Okay? That would be a nice thing, but that does not happen. Okay? 
depending on the frequency error which you have. So, if that does not happen, uh, you see such kind of frequency increase and decrease and what we uh, see here is that uh, we have a phenomenon called cycle slipping. Okay? We will see the cycle slipping that how it uh, happens. In this case, what you are seeing here is a kind of a linear settling of the output frequency. Okay. Linear settling, uh, you would have seen for any uh, first order or second order transfer functions, you apply any small change and for those small changes, what you observe is that there is some kind of peaking and then it settles. Okay. In the final phase, what you observe is in the final phase, the thing has actually settled to the desired output frequency, it is not changing. If you make any small change to the system, it will uh, either bring back or it will track the input changes. So, this is a uh, in uh, at a very broad level, this is what uh, you have during frequency acquisition. Okay. We will understand it that how these things happen and what we expect when we start our PLL okay, from the frequency point of view. Now, because so many things happen in the PLL depending on the initial frequency error which you see, the frequency acquisition of the PLL right, can happen in different ways as you see here. So, what we do is we define different kind of acquisition ranges okay, that how you are acquiring the output frequency okay, based on that we define the acquisition ranges. Okay. The first range acquisition range is defined as hold in range, I will explain it what it means. Okay. So, hold in range is the range of frequencies the PLL can stay in lock normally defined with the word delta omega h, omega h. This is the range of frequencies the PLL can stay in lock. What it means? Okay. What it means is the following. So, let us say this is my omega in frequency. Okay. It is not 0, you will just treat this point as omega naught. So, I have a PLL okay, uh, and uh, I have uh, the input frequency which is omega naught. If I vary my omega naught by a small amount, so this is omega out. There is a difference between omega out and omega naught. Okay. As I vary my input frequency, my output frequency will vary. Whether it has uh, the same, the free running frequency same as the input or not, but my input frequency, but my output frequency will follow the input frequency. Okay. That range is going to be defined by hold in range. So, here if you pick up any point on this omega in, you pick up any point. So, this I am writing omega naught plus delta omega h and this is omega naught minus delta omega h. You pick up any point for the input frequency okay, when the PLL is locked, how it reached there that is not of concern right now. The concern is if I have my input and output frequencies of the PLL given uh, if I pick up any point on this at which your input and output frequencies are same. If you make any change at this point, if you apply any disturbance to the PLL, the PLL will remain in lock, it will not uh, lose the lock. 
Okay. So, I will just give one example here. So, in this example, let us say I have this frequency omega in is equal to omega 1. So, my omega out will also be equal to omega 1. Okay. If that is the case, if I apply a small change in the phase for the PLL, right? Applying a change in the phase is like applying a disturbance to the PLL. If I apply disturbance to the PLL in terms of phase change, not in terms of frequency change, the PLL will remain in log. It will not lose log. Second, if I apply a, a small change in omega 1, let us say omega 1, I made a small change in omega input frequency omega in 1 plus delta omega the output frequency will track the input frequency. You apply a small change in the input frequency, you give PLL enough time, okay? the output frequency will follow the input frequency. So, till the point where I can go by applying a small changes to the input frequency such that I will be able to use my small signal diagram for the PLL, right? Till that time, I can keep changing my input frequency. Till that point, it till the that particular output frequency, you can track. If at omega naught plus delta omega h, I apply plus some delta omega, right? At that point the output frequency is does not follow the input frequency, the PLL loses log. So, the extreme limit on either side which you can uh, track by changing the input frequencies, that frequency range comes under Holden range. So, point number one that your omega out should follow omega in okay why when you are applying small changes in the input frequency it keeps following omega out keeps following omega in after a point it will happen that if you make a small positive change in omega in on the positive side or a small negative change on the negative side the PLL loses log okay that limit is your uh, hold in range. Okay? This is one way to understand. Other way to understand is on this, see here we are not talking about the free, free running frequency can be anything. We are looking at omega in, omega out as uh, following omega in. If you pick up, the other way to look at is you pick up any point on this uh, input frequency span and your, um, at that particular point where omega out is also equal to omega in how it reached there that is not a concern right now okay that is no, that doesn't matter actually so you reach your omega out reaches omega in and then you apply some disturbance at that point some phase disturbance or control voltage or error disturbance whatever small disturbance not like a big disturbance a small disturbance you can so that you can use your small signal analysis changes are not big the pll holds the lock there, it does not lose its lock. Okay? So, for example, if I pick up this point with the one big cross here and I apply a small change of delta omega, it is not going to happen that the PLL loses lock and output frequency is uh, uh, loses lock means that your output frequency can be anywhere, it does not follow the, uh, it does not follow the input frequency that will not happen if if that particular input frequency is within the hold in range okay so hold in range you can think this is a very wide frequency is a very wide frequency range over which the pll can hold its lock okay even in the presence of small disturbances second acquisition range is defined as lock in range Okay. So, what is this lock in range? Well, the range of frequencies that 
the PL over which the PLL can acquire lock. can acquire lock without cycle slipping without cycle slipping or without which is the same as without phase error exceeding 2 pi now this is interesting okay how this happens so here what we need to understand is that what we mean by what we meant by phase error exceeding 2 pi. So, these two terms are the same cycle slipping or phase error exceeding 2 pi ok they are the same things. So, we want the phase error should not increase more than 2 pi ok. So, what it means is let us see with an example. So, I will pick up an example for the same PLL mixer and a loop filter based. So, recall this. So, you have a simple loop filter ok and you had a VCO this was the PLL which you looked right. So, R C V error V C and this is V out, this is V in. Okay. Now, in this particular example, V in is sin of omega in T and V out is cosine of omega out T. I just chose the amplitude as 1. Okay. So, let us say at T equal to 0, omega out is equal to omega free because V c is equal to 0, V c is equal to 0, V error is equal to 0 and omega in is not equal to omega out. So, there is a frequency error ok. So, if there is a frequency error, there is a phase error also we know that. What is phase error? phase error is input phase minus output phase ok and input phase minus output phase you know this here omega in times dt minus output phase er, output uh, phase that is omega free plus kvco times vc of tau times d tau 0 to t ok. So, this is the phase error. Now, this omega in t omega n is fixed here minus omega free which is the initial frequency error which you have minus 0 to t times k v c o control voltage d tau. Now, what we are talking about is the following that when you start your PLL and you have a frequency error which is this delta omega to begin with, the PLL at a acquires the log with omega in equal to omega out equal to omega in without phase error exceeding 2 pi. So, this is a closed loop transfer function we do not know what is going to happen ok how it is going to change, but if phase error well to begin with all both the signals are aligned. So, you may start with some phase error and finally, whether you attain a certain value of the phase error ok and then the phase error remains constant the PLL acquires log good. If the PLL does not acquire log then uh, what will you what you will see is that the phase error will exceed 2 pi ok. So, this should this limit on phase error with respect to time is, is actually less than 2 pi. If the from the beginning from a, the time instant t equal to 0 as the input changes as the input frequency uh, is applied 
and the free running frequency is not the same as the input frequency, you begin with the frequency error. And if you acquire the lock without the phase error exceeding 2 pi during the frequency acquisition, okay, then the upper limit on that frequency error is called as lock in range. So, what is this maximum delta omega 0 which you can have okay, in the beginning which the PLL can over which the PLL can acquire lock without this phase error exceeding 2 pi that is called as lock in range. Okay. Next is the pull in range. So, you will be interested in uh, knowing that okay, if the PLL, if the phase error exceeds 2 pi, what is the problem? Okay. Or if the phase error exceeds 2 pi, can it acquire lock also? Well, yes, it is possible. So, by the way, lock in range is normally uh, uh, written with delta omega L okay. and pull in range is uh, normally defined with delta omega P. So, pull in range is the range of frequencies the range of frequencies over which the PLL can acquire the lock frequencies over which the PLL can acquire lock with or without cycle slipping both. Now, when will this happen? That is something which we can understand only with the help of an example. We will surely look at it. So, sometimes it may happen that the phase error exceeds 2 pi and if the phase error exceeds 2 pi, uh, the PLL may still acquire the lock. Okay. Now, just think about it. This is cycle slipping. Now, you may understand what is the cycle slipping. During the cycle slipping, the phase error is exceeding 2 pi. Okay. As you see here that the frequency increase. Now, just uh, think uh, do some back uh, calculation. I know that omega out is equal to omega free plus k v c o times v c. Right? If omega out is having a ripple as shown to you here, that means that ripple can only come with the control voltage. That control voltage is also having some kind of ripple which is like this and as you see it is having peaks and nulls. Right? So, control voltage is having peaks and troughs. Okay? So, you have a maximum value, you have a minimum value that is what you have with the control voltage. Now, control voltage in our type 1 PLL right, is coming as uh, just a filter version of the error voltage. So, the low frequency signal gets, uh, low frequency signal is passed. So, if control voltage is having uh, peaks and troughs like this, then your error voltage will also have and error voltage can only have such kind of periodic peaks and troughs only when the phase error changes 2 pi because error voltage is nothing but equal to half of sine of phase error at any given time. So, if you are seeing periodic waves in case of uh, voltage error, that means the phase error is spanning through 0 to 2 pi. Okay? And that is how uh, this particular acquisition happens with cycle slip. Okay? So, the pull in ranges whether it happens with cycle slipping or without cycle slipping, whatever uh, is the method that comes under pull in range. Hold in range is a one step high, uh, one step further. It says, I do not care about how you reach there, but if you are there, you can hold the lock. That means, even for a small disturbances, it is not going to uh, 
make it's not going to make the parallel to lose log. So that is holding range. So if you look at uh, compare these ranges, what you will find lock in range is mostly uh, less than equal to pull in range, which is less than equal to hold in range. Okay. Okay. So we next we will see uh, that how uh, this pull in happens uh, in a natural circuit in transient uh, domain. Okay, and how does this hold in also works? Uh, okay, so uh, that's what we can do. That's what we discuss about the different ranges in the PLLs. Thank you.